Yar har, me mateys. Hello and welcome to King of Seas. These will be my first impressions of the game. I will try and tell you roughly and relatively quickly what the game is all about, what you can expect from it, and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Anyways, so what is this game all about? Well, this is an open world procedurally generated ergo roguelite-esque game about pirates. About being a pirate, about being wrongfully accused of murder, though I won't spoil any of the story, and uh, yeah. You go around from port to port collecting various interesting items, plundering, robbing the, high the Royal Navy, and it's all sort of uh, rounded off, if you will, with a very colourful cast of characters. Uh, I think I'm about to beat a ship much bigger than me. Give me a second, I'm sorry. Yeah, we got him. I think we got him. Alright, good, we got him. Whew, that was the first bit of actual proper combat I've done in this game. <laughs> There's two of them. Uh, all right, that was that was lovely. So, let's get into the sort of meat and potatoes of the game. Uh, the key component of the gameplay is what you just saw. Uh, it's basically circling around enemy vessels, trying to take them out. Uh, the combat is done rather interestingly, and uh, gotta say, I have very little criticism on behalf of the controls or the combat or the way it feels or anything along those lines. Uh, this thing handles like a ship. Uh, you don't go forward, you raise the sails, and currently we're going, well, forward-ish, depending on how the wind blows, with three full sails. And then... that is unfortunate. That was very unfortunate. I am nearly dead now as a result of that. Yes, that was, uh... Well, alright, I mean, we're gonna loot this ship, maybe we'll, we'll get something out of it. Maybe. Who knows? Um, sorry about that. Probably should record uh, this and, uh, and, and talk it at separate intervals, but anyways. Uh, oh, I didn't realise it'll drop loot like that. Turning is rather difficult, um, as you imagine, in a ship like this. It has a turning cycle of, uh, well, not quite the moon, that would be a galleon or something along those lines. This is a lot more agile, but even still, controlling it is kind of a skill. Um, you will ram yourself into shore, uh, you know, occasionally. At least I hope I'm not the only one that does that, because it does take a little bit of, um, well, a little bit of time to learn how everything works properly and all of that. Furthermore, the way the combat is done is very controller intensive. Matter of fact, keyboard support for this game is kind of limited, um, and hopefully that will change in the future. I mean, they have announced that it will change in the future, but for now, you absolutely need a controller to play this game. It's very, very difficult to do it on the keyboard. In, is it impossible? Not really. There's there's ways around it if um, you know if you don't have a controller. But you, on, if, if we're honest here, um, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but if you want to play video games in the 21st century, you need a controller one way or another. I mean, no, obviously it will depend on what sort of games you like to play, but you know, you just just get a controller. You know, they're, they're relatively cheap. You can get an Xbox 360 controller for like I don't know, dirt cheap. Uh, nowadays, and you can, you can get a pretty darn decent one as well. Like, uh, I've had this wireless one, from just a generic Xbox 360 controller, um, for I think like six years now. It works perfectly to this day, so yeah, it's, it's a worthwhile investment. Anyways, uh, that said, more and, and better keyboard support is coming. Uh, the game has colourful characters, as you can see, both in uh, the, the, the style of, of writing and the, the visual aspect, um, and it has a rather interesting story with plots, magic, and, and all sorts of things, but 
The core gameplay elements are this is a roguelite. It is perceived as a procedurally generated map. And you go around either trading different items from port to port or fighting opponents for loot in order to better your ship and, uh, you know, eventually progress the story and do all sorts of things, but ultimately to just sort of have fun in this open world pirate simulator. Now, the game is fairly story intense at first. Uh, the tutorial is rather lengthy. Which is a good thing, it'll explain everything in detail, but sometimes... Did I just pick a fight with this blunder ship? I hope not. I didn't, okay. Stop just spawning out of there, I need... Uh, okay. I need to dock and, and fix my ship up, because I've... Yeah. It was tough, alright. Uh, so far, from what I can see here, there are five types of ships you can have. A brig, a galleon, a sloop, which is what I currently have, unfortunately, and a frigate and a flute. Um, now, there might be more coming soon. There might be more when you progress the story and unlock them. I'm not sure, but so far, this is how many I have. And uh, you can customize your ship to a ridiculous extent. Uh, there are all sorts of items that you can get, and depending on the difficulty level when you lose your ship, well, sorry, if you lose your ship, uh, you will lose everything from the inventory, or you will keep the inventory. It, it really depends on how you set the game up. Um, and truly one of, the, one of the sort of really neat aspects of the whole thing, which kind of reminds me of Sid Meier's Pirates a little bit, and speaking of, by god, we need a Sid Meier's Pirates remastered or something along those lines, but this is perhaps the closest we're going to get for a while. Uh, you can go to the market and you can buy stuff. You can buy food, candy, rum, um, repair kits, all sorts of things, and then you can sell them to other ports. Now, this will require you to have a little bit of knowledge ahead as to, you know, where certain things can be sold, where certain things can be bought, but... Uh, it even tells you right there, so this port produces a large amount of rum and a small amount of candies. What does that mean for me? Well, for me that means I would like to buy all of the rum that this port has. Unfortunately, that's only three. Yeah, so it, it apparently produces a large amount of it, but not that large of an amount of it. But anyways, let's go ahead and buy three rum from this port. I just sold three rum. Uh, I forgot that, that was in my inventory. Whoops. Alright, so here's the thing. We're going to buy 45 rum, which is pretty much all of our gold. And then we're going to leave, we're going to raise anchor, we're going to do the quest that we need to do, and we're also going to sell the rum to some other port elsewhere. Now. We now run into probably my only gripe with the game. Although the ship controls are kind of realistic, going from port to port and docking can be a bit of a challenge. Avoiding ships that randomly spawn out of a port, also a little bit of a challenge. Um, and the map is kind of atrocious because you need to zoom out like this and, and all that, but eh, all right, map is, is, is not as big of an issue, right? So, anyways, let's escort this fleet ship to where it needs to go, and, uh, well, see what there is uh, out on the high seas. And out on the high seas is where I can demonstrate the combat, uh, well, hopefully demonstrate the combat to a somewhat competent degree. The combat in this game goes as follows. You, as you saw, circle around the enemy ship, left trigger fires the, uh, oh, sorry, right trigger fires the right guns, left trigger fires the left guns, Three types of ammo, chain shot, grape shot, and round shot. Uh, any of you that have played Napoleon or Empire Total War know exactly what these things are and what they do, but for, the, for those of you that don't, the round shot causes maximum amount of damage to the hull. A 
thought that barrel wasn't explosive and that I can pick it up and it'll have some sort of gunpowder or something. Yeah. Anyways, let's stop the ship. And I don't have enough repair kits. Lovely. Well, there you go. Uh, at least I show you how the repair system works. You stop the ship and you repair it. Uh, round shot causes maximum amount of damage to the hull. Chain shot does damage to the sails, which will reduce your enemy's mobility. And grape shot is short range, though not in this particular game. Um, matter of fact, it has a shockingly long range. However, uh, it does damage to the enemy's crew, uh, so it kills the crew off, basically. All right, so, interact with this and pick it up. It's 34 gold, and two rubies, all right, and 34 more gold, and three medicines. All right, that was, that was worth it. Um, now, the one thing that's, that's kind of was a little bit difficult to learn at first is you need to face the port you're trying to dock at, not like sort of dock on the side or whatever, or drift into it, or however you want to call it. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it is what it is, though. So this port produces a large amount of rum as well, and produces a small amount of pelican eggs. So, we don't want to sell the rum here. Matter of fact, we want to buy some if we can, but, you know, not exactly going to be an option. So, what do we do now, then? Um, I suppose we could sell a couple of the rubies that we found, and I suppose we could sell the wood that we bought from the other port. Uh, that was relatively cheap, and then, yeah, I think that that'll do. Uh, so then we can fix the ship and, and try and correct my horrible mistake. Get a little bit more crew on from the tavern, which is something we need to manage as well. And then I'm assuming I just sail out of here and I, uh... yeah, and I... Excuse me, I head on over to where I was going initially. Alright, so... Now you've seen basically the, the, the gist of the combat. Uh, oh, I'm going to escort ships. No, can't pick a fight with that. I was going to, like, try and demonstrate the aforementioned right away, but, eh, no such luck. There are, accordingly to the ammo uh, types, three kinds of health bars that your ship has. The crew health bar, which I believe if it's fully depleted, you're doomed, but don't quote me on that. I've never had my my um, uh, my crew fully, fully depleted, so I'm not quite sure about that. However, the hull, which, yeah, if it, you know, if you lose all your hull HP, you, sh you lose the ship, uh, and you have to respawn on the port, you lose, well, at least on my difficulty level, you lose all of the... Um, inventory items and basically you start over in, in, in some respect. Uh, on the other hand, I need a fishing rod for this, that's a shame. Uh, the sails, which will not, you know, immediately cause any necessary damage to your vessel, in the, oh sorry, necessary damage to your career, um, will in the long run hurt you quite a bit because they, they influence your mobility. Uh, both in, you know, a sort of agility and, and turning speed within uh, a particular battle, and in general, uh, when moving around the map, you need your sails to, to do it efficiently, so, yeah. Three types of health bars, and four kinds of abilities. Uh, these are handled with the X, A, B, and Y buttons on my controller, you know, depending on which one you're using, they're, they're going to be different, but... It kind of reminds me of a MOBA-esque MOBA style um, uh, of doing things with abilities, uh, except these work relatively straightforward and, and, and simply. Uh, you can obviously change your abilities, there are, there are different kinds. Um, won't get into them right now because I haven't unlocked them yet, but yeah, there, there's, there's those as well. Basically like, you know, buffs and, and, and some special things that you can do during combat. Uh, which will make life a little bit easier. Uh, something I also haven't exactly showcased in the port, because I was in a bit of a rush to get the video and thus the story rolling. You can also upgrade various aspects of your ship 
from the sails to the cannons to the crew and so on and so forth. Yes, um, the number of, of crewmates you have on the ship is one thing, the type of crew you have is another. So currently I've upgraded from the starting crew to the Poseidon crew, which I think have some um, extra something. I forgot what, what they had better than the, than the starting crew, but anyways, yeah, they, are, they, they have some stats that, that are better. Anyways, um, the one thing that truly stops me from recommending this game immediately without really getting into any more of it and then sort of adding any caveats to it is how much or how little it'll, um, it'll hold your hand, right? What, what are you doing? Come on, no, no, we're going this way. Stupid. Uh, no, we're almost there, look at that. So... I still have no idea how to dodge that. I, I, I genuinely don't know, I have no idea what that is. Ah, oh well. This will be tough. However, I am more maneuverable. My aim is, is not on point though. Yeah, my aim needs, needs work. Okay. Take some of that, never mind. Is it just me or do I have more cannons on my other side than, than this one? Probably, and I don't have any, any repair kits or anything. Should have bought repair kits! Alright, fire. Uh, sorry, I forgot friendly fire was a thing. Yes, friendly fire is a thing. Okay, dodged out of the way of that. Okay. Okay, somehow that, that dealt damage to me. Yes, okay. Can I have some help? From, I don't know, the local... Oh, that, that was a shame. That would have been a good shot. I think we've got him. He's going to damage my other ship. Please don't ram into me. The armory ship killed me. The armory ship stopped me from, from doing what needed to be done. <sighs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's try and do that again, eh? Um, anyways, that is that is the gist of the game. Um, I gotta be honest with you, I'm a huge fan of the whole aesthetic of it, kind of cartoony and and uh, and, and light-hearted in its approach, and yet it's not something that you just breeze through, right? Combat can be very challenging, as you saw. I mean, we fought a ship way above our pay grade, and uh, part of that is due to my own um, mismanaging, perhaps, of the situation. I didn't expect to be fighting tough ships yet, so I sort of invested into other things, but yeah, anyways. I forgot to mention one of the, the, the sort of most important aspects of, of sailing in general, and that's the wind. Now, the wind is fully simulated in this game, in that... Uh, it blows from various directions, it changes direction, and it heavily influences your mobility. Um, maybe, had I paid more attention to the wind, we wouldn't have died in the previous engagement, but you know what? We're still learning, we're still learning. Maybe also chain shot to knock the guy's sails out and then try and do something, but yeah. Anyways, practice shot, alright. 
that was that was not bad. So, oh, there's, there's I, I I appreciate the lighthouse's insistence. Thank you. High tide cannons and steel cannons. Oh, hello. Hello. High tide cannons. Yes, please. So, there's all sorts of uh, stats for them here. They have slightly lower range, but way higher damage, and their speed is slightly lower, but... Ooh, okay, okay, now, now we're cooking with gasoline. Now there's things happening, right? I like that, I very much like that. Now I fancy a, a rematch with that um, Royal Navy warship. Oh, yes. Alright, anyways, um, all joking aside, the game's terrific, but it's a little bit pricey. Uh, currently on Steam it is 25 euros, which, you know, I understand is not a $60 game, but for something like this, you might expect maybe a little bit less. So, for that reason, and for the reason that the game kind of holds your hand quite a bit, at least early on, later down the line, I don't know how much that changes when you, you know, um, do a lot more of the story, and then, you know, how ex how much exactly it, it sort of lets you go out, and, out into the world. Um, I'm assuming it that, that your freedom exponentially increases as you progress through the game, at least I would hope so. Uh, but it's not a true roguelite in the same style as Sid Meier's Pirates, which I still hold to be the ultimate game of this genre to this day, decades after its release. Um, but this is probably the next best thing. Um, oh, you want to fight? That's that's all right. We can fight. I have new cannons, me. And as a result of my new cannons, you shall perish rather easily. Um, now, probably my favorite bit about the game, which, uh, hello. I didn't expect a tutorial on the logbook as soon as I opened it, but that kind of scared me, honestly. <laughs> and this, okay, now, now I kind of expected this. Talents page, yes, 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 yes. Um, I was just about to get into those. This is your skill levels, right? This this is your leveling. This is how you increase stuff. Damage dealt by our abilities increased by 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 percent. Damage by long range cannons, etc., etc. You um, you increase these. Now I was going to go into the inventory because we unlocked something for the ship uh, when we were or when we when we finished fighting those things. So we unlocked the merchant crew. Currently, I have the Poseidon crew, which. Uh, does that, as you can see. Uh, Merchant Crew does something a little bit different, so I don't think I want to equip them right now. Though... Okay, what is this? Flame Tide. Now that is interesting. Alright, I'll, I'll take that as one of the abilities, of course. Uh, and also, I think we have new bullets, right? Yeah, so more damage to the hull and diplomacy too. Hey, who says gunboat diplomacy can't be taken very literally? Uh, <laughs> I also have ancient cannons, which is not very useful. I, uh, is there any reason to destroy these? I don't, I don't think so. I think we can sell these, and that's probably a better way of doing things. And then I also have the whale figure on the... Uh, on the ship, which will just straight up provide more whole life and armor. Very, very useful. There we go. Now we've seriously decked out our ship. Uh, let's use this ability and, and see what it's like. Probably not on the smuggler. Ah, it's Greek fire. 
Ah, oh, fascinating. All right, cool. I like it. Uh, I suppose Sunless Sea was kind of in this type of genre, although that's that's a little bit of a stretched definition of this genre, I suppose. But I guess Sunless Sea was was one of the titles that we had that were kind of similar to this. But other than that, and like I said, Sid Meier's Pirates, there's been very little just pirate games in general. I mean, okay, we have Assassin's Creed Black Flag, we have... Um, the multiplayer one with four-player crews, I forget the name. I'll remember it in a second. But anyways, like, the, the, that, that was different. That wasn't single-player, that wasn't an open-world RPG, and, and trading and different lifestyles and life paths on the high seas weren't exactly emphasized in those games. And this, at least off the offset, uh, on the offset, appears to give you that kind of freedom where you can choose what you want to do. Now, ultimately, it still boils down to a roguelite formula that it follows relatively strictly, where combat is almost mandatory, and yeah, um, the, 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 the game really focuses around some specific things, which is not necessarily a bad thing, I'm just uh, describing what the, what the state of it is. On the other hand, Sid Meier's Pirates, though, but, you know. Uh, by the way, if you haven't played Sid Meier's Pirates ever, Go and do that, like, right now. Uh, yes, the game came out in, like, the 90s, um, late 90s, mind you, if it's any consolation, but that game is freaking amazing. All right, that that is one amazing invention by one Sid Meier, and it is just the pinnacle of this genre of video game. Not to, to harp on uh, King of Seas, it does a great job at what it does. It sort of focuses on things a little bit differently. More on combat, less on the sort of free roamy nature of it, and it doesn't have any ground combat, which Sid Meier's uh, Meier Pirates has ground combat. Uh, but, you know, like I said, focuses on different things. That's, that's entirely legitimate and, and, uh, and all right. Anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and finish this mission if we can. I picked up some repair kits as well. Yeah, I, I really fancy uh, a fight with uh, with that Royal Navy ship now. If uh, if we can finagle it, it's probably not going to be here, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's the nature of procedurally generated content, I suppose. But anyways, there we go. Um. There are also governors which I haven't gotten to yet, but again, this is a first impressions video, not a review. Uh, there is a bank which, depending on your difficulty level, can be very, very useful or useless. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I lose my ship five minutes from now. What's the point of me holding on to these steel boarding cannons if I can't really use them, or to these steel cannons? Um, I can only use one type of cannon on my ship, so why would I hold these? Uh, I could sell them, or alternatively, I can stash them away in the bank. And when I lose my ship and come back with a, uh, you know, from a different save file, uh, not from a different save file, but when I respawn, it's such a simple word, why did I forget it? Um, when I respawn, I can take these steel cannons from the bank. Right? On the other hand, if you have it set up so that you don't lose any of your items when you die, then, yeah, you know, bank is kind of useless. But, Nevertheless, uh, I think we can sell our rum here for a profit, hopefully. I'm going to go ahead and assume that that made me at least a little bit of gold. Maybe. Potential. Whoops. Sorry, I just hit my keyboard with the controller. Uh, maybe, potentially, hopefully. Anyways, let's go over to... Actually, let's go to the carpenter again. Uh, market, then. No, carpenter. Ah, so this carpenter can only repair things. Where did I get my upgrades from, then? Has to be in the other port, eh? Alright, fair enough. Raise the anchor and uh, set sail. Oh, 
Oh, there's a military ship. You found friends, have you? All right. Tell you what. How'd you like this? You didn't much care for it, did you? Unfortunate. I'm sorry, could you, could you... I can't move! Luckily or not, that hit my sails and not my hull, so... Aiming is gonna is gonna be a skill I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to learn eventually, but for now, we sort of just circle like this. I really wish you you would stop ramming into things. I understand you're unarmed and that's your only way of participating in the fight, but sometimes it's better not to participate. That totally hit them. Come on. Okay, how about you be a good boy and take some shots for me? Yes. Not too many, though. I still need to protect you. Come on. Good. 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 Didn't mean to fire there, I'll be brutally honest with you. Alpha. I, I blame Napoleon Total War, where guns could swivel on, uh, on ships like this. There we go. Alright, I mean, the firing arc was wider and a little bit more accurate. Let's see what we got from all of this. Very little, at least that's what it seems like, but... <laughs> it is what it is. Let's, uh, let's head into port and, uh, and wrap this up. So, ultimately I think I've showed you what the game is, is about. Um, what I would like from it more is less focus on the story and more sort of free roamy elements. Now I'm not sure how much of this again is introduced later in the game, but it's been a while now and I'm still having my hand held and I'm still not exactly in a linear world and, and path, but it's not exactly fully open world either. and. Um, what I'm saying is maybe a good sort of option for, f for the future is to add more random events, more repeatable quests, tasks that you can do for various governors, and then when you do those tasks you maybe level up a particular settlement that you do the tasks for, and that unlocks certain purchases in the particular port, or it gives you certain abilities, maybe it gives you an escort ship when you're nearby, or something along those lines. I think that would be lovely, but um, yeah. Anyways, let's let's dock here and and, and see. Um, I need to repair my ship. That is a lot of gold just to fix up a ship. But hey. And then can I do anything else? Market? Uh, sorry, tavern. Do I need more crew? Definitely need more crew. Twenty more, and then market. Yeah, nothing but, uh, but that. All right. So now we're supposed to go out and sink company merchant ships, right? Yes, three of them. Well, there you go. Um, anyways, do I recommend the game? If you are a fan of Sid Meier's Pirates, if you like the idea of sailing around in a tiny little boat like this, fighting stuff, absolutely. I, I absolutely recommend it. I cannot recommend it enough. If you're not entirely a fan of the genre and you're not sure whether you would like something like this, it is a little bit pricey. I mean, I understand it's an indie game and I understand it's not a full price title and I understand there's quite a lot of re replayability in it, but all of that said, uh, nevertheless, it is it is a little bit pricey to be, to be sort of... Uh, jumping into it blind, so I would I would certainly recommend that you do a little bit more digging. Um, but the game is is pretty darn fun, and uh, yeah, I, I don't have much negative to say about it. 
other than maybe a few design de decisions I would prefer one way or, an, um, you know, my way, <laughs> let's say. Um, but that's, that's entirely subjective and um, in reality the game works really, really well. It does what it's supposed to. Um, so yeah, that's that's about it as far as uh, as far as I'm concerned for this title. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Like, subscribe, down below. Uh, no. Oh, that is just evil. Like, subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video. Want to stay tuned with the rest of the content, Dab Juice on the channel. Until next time, have fun, take care, and bye bye.